Hey, what's going on guys? Ash here, back again with another Power Rangers related video, and once again, we're talking about the leaks and the rumours about the upcoming Power Rangers reboot. So, this is coming from Reddit, where Jinsaku did a Twitter space the other night, last night, depending on your time zone, where they revealed several interesting bits of information about the upcoming reboot. So, we're going to talk about it in this video and go over the information and give my own thoughts on it and what I think about it. So, let's read these bits of pages about what we have on this uh, leaks and rumours and talk about it. So, first up is let's talk about what they list off first. Stuff we already know that is 100% confirmed by articles and stuff like that. Official trade sources, they say. So, a new Power Rangers reboot is underway from Jonathan and Whistle and E1. The film was originally de in development by Paramount before E1 took over, and the decision to make the new reboot interconnected to the universe of the TV show and the movies. Okay, the new the new reboot projects will be streaming exclusively on Netflix, and will consist of the shows, movies, and some children programming. So that was from Deadline. We talked about that a couple of months ago. So, then they go on to say. Nothing has been officially announced to the press other than that, so keep in mind that whenever discussing about leaks or anything. So, uh, they talk about the Jinsaku stuff we mentioned earlier, and then they say, The unused script details line up with the previous reports from the Illuminati and... I need some water. I'll be back in a jiffy! The unused script details line up with the previous reports from the Illuminati and Ryan Unicomb. The Illuminati has backed up most of these details about the new script and direction. I'll have to look that up about what my friends over at the Illuminati are saying, so we'll definitely have to check that out later down the line. Or I'll just shoot them a DM or something. Who knows, who knows. But, uh, let's keep reading. Recently, last night, Jinsaku did a Twitter call with fans. We talked about that as well. Uh, so... Here's some of the story details. The original script done by Patrick Barlow, or Barlow that featured time travel to the 90s and the multiverse was completely scrapped. Okay then. The new script by Brian Edward Hill keeps little to nothing to do from the previous draft. This is a hard reboot that is completely separate from everything that's come before it. So, maybe this is why Amy Jo Johnson was upset about the whole direction that Power Rangers is going. Okay. The new team of rangers in the reboot are 100% new characters and are not based on Mighty Morphin or any of their previous iterations. It will be likely a 5 person team. Okay. They are looking at actors around 20 to 25 and will probably still be in high school but that part isn't certain. Alright. The TV show will be directly tied into the movie but it's not known if the rangers origin will be told in one or either. The plan is for a new team to be... Wait. The plan is for the new team... To be the team, they'll be following for a while. The, the, that will be following for a while. Okay, so that's interesting. It looks like, uh, from what we've heard so far, it sounds like the movie is going to lead into the TV show, and that's going to be the new interconnected universe. So, that's some interesting bit of information right there. So, but hearing that it's not going to be connected to anything that comes before it is kind of a good thing and a bad thing because that way you don't have to base stuff off the original characters from Mighty Morphin or the original characters or characters that we've seen before. These can be totally new different characters that we've never met before, never seen before and they can shine in their own light. They don't have to be sort of be the new Jason or the new Trini or the new Zack. They can be their own totally different thing. So I'm excited to see that with what they can do with those characters. All right, next page. Zords and Zord battles will still be a thing, but they won't be as frequent an, a, as an occurrence in this universe. Uh, I.e., they will not be used every episode. It's even possible possible for large-scale Zords. They will be only be saved for big events like the season finale. That makes sense. If you have um, CGI Zords every episode, that's going to cost a fair bit of money. Uh, the tone will be mature, but not rated R. Did anyone seriously think that? Then they are really trying to differentiate. Uh, differentiate this new reiteration from the franchise has traditionally been okay so they want to be a mature not too mature but mature enough so probably like pg-13 or mature enough but not like r-rated like sex blood and violence i don't think we're ever going to get that for power rangers they tried it with with uh saban didn't try it um the castlevania guy tried it once before it got mixed results um some people loved it some people hated it um, 
The movie will probably come out before the show and is being seen as a launching point for everything else. Okay, we talked about that earlier where the movie will sort of be the launching pad for the TV show and this brand new universe. Uh, the show is more likely to be serialized opposed to Emma uh, Power Rangers traditional episodic format. That's cool. I would love to see more serialized stuff in Power Rangers, much like the comics, because usually with Power Rangers, it's very episodic. Something happens, the episode ends, and then they hit the reset button for the longest time, and then they move on to the next day. So if we have serialized stuff, that will be good. All right, so behind the scenes stuff, let's do this. This is going to be juicy. The reboot movie will be... The reboot movie will most likely be not in theaters and go straight to Netflix, apparently due to the pandemic and Snake Eyes underperforming at the box office. Yeah, Snake Eyes done by Hasbro on E1, that hurt them big time because they marketed the fuck out of Snake Eyes and that flopped really badly because I think that was bad timing, bad marketing when they released it. They released it still in the pandemic, I think, and because they did that, it failed. Um, okay. Casting process, the, the casting process has just started. Netflix is especially is looking for actors from either other shows, no open auditions. Alright, so that's interesting. Um, that's very different. Uh, for a short while there'll be a struggle, for a short while there was some struggle between Jonathan and Whistle and E1, with him having the push for a more mature take. That's interesting. At one point, he actually did slash almost leave the project to work on other stuff for other companies, but they worked it out and now he has the freedom to do almost anything he wants. Okay, let me have another drink of water and I'll come back to this. I'll be back in a jiffy! So the Jonathan Entwistle thing. This is interesting because Jonathan Entwistle was very, well... The whole reboot of Jonathan Entwistle was radio silence for the longest time. And Joe over the Illuminati uh, sort of hinted and theorized that Jonathan Entwistle had sort, of, had sort of walked off behind the scenes and they would announce a replacement later down the line. And I was starting to think that as well because we had heard nothing from Jonathan Entwistle. He did tease something Lord Draken related later down the line. But apart from that, for the longest time, we heard nothing through... 2020 and 2021 there was radio silence about this project so a lot of people were wondering if Jonathan Entwistle had been replaced but I'm glad that him and Hasbro were able to work it out um so Netflix is the distributor of the project they are not the prim primarily funders of it Hasbro and E1R so that's because a lot of people are worrying and this uh sentence brings it up a lot of people are making claims and theorizing that because Netflix is uh, so it's going under the Netflix uh, brand, a lot of people are thinking that um, Netflix is going to cancel it. They could do that. They could do that after one or two seasons. But this is going to be mostly funded by Hasbro and E1. So Netflix isn't putting money from their own pocket into this. It's going to be Hasbro and E1. So... A lot of people who are saying this is going to fail because of Netflix or Netflix is going to cancel it. It could still happen, but Hasbro and E1 are paying for this, not Netflix. It's going to be sort of like Pokemon on Netflix. The Pokemon company and the anime studio still runs that, but over here in America and Australia, it's a Netflix exclusive, much like Close Enough on Australian Netflix. Ha uh, HBO Max exclusive for you in America but in Australia it's on Netflix okay let's keep reading uh, the current plans to still film in Vancouver later this year provided by the current COVID situation doesn't get out of hand all right so what else is there there were all those were all the details on the live-action movie reboot uh, and the TV show however there were some possible leaks about potential PR projects later down the line other leaks and rumors a new animated series is being planned that might involve the multiverse and will be mostly only new planned project to connect the current PR continuity. That's interesting. So we might get something animated. Might. Okay. One, we got one more page. Um, unlike the live action stuff, this will be mostly aimed towards kids. Unknown if it or unknown if or how much Jonathan and Whistle is involved. Dino Fury is the last traditional Sentai ad ad adaptation for now. Okay, so for now, that's interesting. They could adapt more later down the line. 
Another live-action Power Rangers season targeting mostly children, similar to a Toku-style format, is currently in consideration, but it's still a long way off and may or may not be happening. So this part here, take this part as a... Okay, don't bother Simon Bennett about this part here, okay? Because a lot of people are probably going to tweet at him and at him about this part here. I'm asking nicely, don't bother Simon about the next season of Power Rangers after Dino Fury. Leave the dude alone, please. Whether Dino Fury is the last season or not, just leave Simon alone. Let him let him rest in peace. Let him not rest in peace, that, that sounds bad. Um let the dude just chill out and stuff like that. Um Let the dude chill. <laughs> Don't bother him on Twitter with your stupid questions. Uh, you can visit Jinsaku's Twitter page if you want to listen to the entire chat. Da, 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 da. As previously, okay. As previously said, even though there is some, okay. As previously, as previously said, even though there are some credibility credibility behind these leaks, plus they line up well with the recent timeline of events, none of this stuff has been confirmed by E1 or Hasbro. Okay. Also, take that into consideration. We are supposed to get some type of official announcement in March, so be in the lookout for that. In the meantime, take this with face value. So, this is all some very, very interesting information. And we don't know everything entirely. So, this is all leaks and rumours. But come March, we might have some more information about this brand new reboot universe. So, stay tuned for that, because I'll definitely be covering it on the channel. But... I'll definitely keep in contact with Jinsaku and the Illuminati to see what, um, I'll definitely keep in contact with them and maybe, uh, talk about them about the rumours and stuff like that and chat with them because I believe them. I think they're a good source for this. A lot of people say this is crazy fan speculation and just shooting shit at the walls and see what happens, but I think they've got some good sources and some of this stuff is kind of lining up with what's going to get announced later down the line, so... I have faith in Jinsaku and the Illuminati with what might happen, but I'm also going to stay seated and patiently wait for something to be revealed later down the line. So, with that said, I'm going to bring this video to a close. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Special thanks to all the members such as Swaggerfall and Andrew McCoyle and the Power Bunny who is a $30 member. You guys are awesome. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and don't forget to turn on notifications. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Take care. Bye.